Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the credentials of the newly appointed ambassadors of France, Kuwait, Bhutan, Sweden and the Czech Republic. The French ambassador Jerome Cochard arrived at Sakhir Palace. He was received by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of France to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The Kuwaiti ambassador, Sheikh Thamar Jabar Al Ahmed Al Sabah, arrived at Sakhir Palace. He was met by the head of royal protocol, and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. He then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Kuwait to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The Bhutanese ambassador, Sharing Yolchin Benjur, arrived at the palace. He was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. He then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Bhutan to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The Swedish ambassador, Henrik Landerholm, arrived at the palace. He was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador.
He then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador to Sweden to Bahrain, and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The Czech ambassador, Juraj Kodelka, arrived at the palace. He was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. He then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of the Czech Republic to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. His Majesty the King praised the close relations linking Bahrain and countries of the ambassadors and the progress witnessed in all fields. He wished them success in assuming their diplomatic duties to further enhance the multilateral relations. For their part, the ambassadors conveyed to His Majesty the King the greetings of their leaders and their wishes of good health and happiness to His Majesty and further progress and prosperity to Bahrain. The ceremony was attended by the Minister of Royal Court, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Follow-up and the Royal Court and the Head of Royal Protocol. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Khair Palace the heads of delegations that has participated in the government forum for combating human trafficking in the Middle East and the Labor Market Regulatory Authority in cooperation with the International Organization for Immigration and the UNODC and the GCC and Arabian Gulf to greet His Majesty the King. His Majesty welcomed the guests and wished them success on their meeting and expressed Bahrain's pride in hosting this forum and highlighted the opportunities it provides in addition to the exchange of experts and praised all efforts that contributed to the success of the forum. His Majesty affirmed that the Kingdom achieving the first category in the U.S. Foreign Ministry report on one of the most successful countries in combating human trafficking reflects the Kingdom's commitment to international standards and enhance the protection of human rights. He said that this is a result of the joint coordination between the Foreign Ministry and LMRA and the National Committee to Combat Human Trafficking, in addition to all the institutions that adopted initiatives and programs to make Bahrain a model in this field. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrainis welcome and respect everyone without discrimination and they are keen to communicate with everyone, praising their efforts in achieving further progress and prosperity for the Kingdom. His Majesty stressed the importance of preserving human dignity and safety and affirmed that the Kingdom will continue following the path of justice, rights and equalities, as well as communicate with the countries of the world regardless of their cultures and religions. The attendees expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and praised Bahrain's success in combating human trafficking and being categorized as one of the top countries in this field in the MENA region.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity, Work and Youth Affairs and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa, witnessed the final training session of the first national football team preceding the match against Iran and the double qualifiers for the 2022 World Cup and the 2023 Asian Cup, which will be held today at 7.30 p.m. at the National Stadium. His Highness Sheikh Nasr's attendance and follow-up of the team's the national team's training comes within the framework of his interest to continuously follow up on the national teams. His Highness met with the chairman and members of the board of directors of the Bahrain Football Association, chaired by Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, members of the technical administrative staff and the national team players. His Highness was also briefed on the team's final preparations before the match. Deputy Prime Minister and President of the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, patronized the graduation ceremony of the sixth batch of graduates of Bahrain Polytechnic, which was held at the Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Hall at the University of Bahrain and Sakhir. The event was attended by a number of ministers, senior officials, and invited guests. His Highness gave a speech to mark the occasion in which he expressed satisfaction in Bahrain Polytechnic's rising status. He said that the development of Bahrain Polytechnic reflects the objectives of the government plan and Bahrain's Vision 2030, in which Bahrainis are regarded as the key component of the country's economy and development strategies. He said that within 10 years only, the college has managed to fully understand the needs of the changing labor market by providing it with the necessary skills and specializations through its cooperation with the private sector. His Highness expressed satisfaction with the statistics that have emerged about the college's graduates, 85% of whom have been able to find employment in their areas of specializations, and 8% of whom have started new businesses within 24 months of graduation. His Highness affirmed that the accomplishments of Bahrain Polytechnic reflects their commitment to the royal directives of His Majesty the King by emphasizing the development of education, especially in light of the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Education, Majid Naimi, and to the College's Board of Directors, CEO, and all the College's staff for their efforts in making this accomplishment. He congratulated the graduates and their parents and wished them success. The ceremony included speeches by the Minister of Education, the College's CEO, Jeff Zabitsky, and as well as guests of honor and Regional Education Solutions Manager at Microsoft Middle East and North Africa, Simon Issa. The importance of the college in producing capable graduates was emphasized in the speeches as well as the college's contribution to the economic progress of the country. After that, a student gave a speech on behalf of the graduating students and then a documentary about the college was displayed before His Highness delivered the certificates to the graduates.
The Speaker of the Representatives Council for the Azania chaired the parliamentary delegation participating in the 141st meeting of the General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union in Serbia. The participation comes in line with the importance of parliamentary democracy role in developing and strengthening external parliamentary relations and building bridges of friendship and cooperation with various regional and international parliaments and to highlight the reform project led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The delegations of Arab, Islamic and Asian groups will hold meetings in order to coordinate positions and review issues at the parliamentary session. The Speaker of the Representative Council for the Zainal met yesterday with the President of the Serbian National Assembly, Majak Djokovic, during the 141st meetings of the General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union in Serbia. Zainal affirmed that the parliamentary community is demanded to take an active and effective stand in the protection of maritime navigation in the Arabian Gulf region and in all of the world's countries to ensure the protection of the global economy. She pointed out that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is keen on promoting international safety and security as well as the culture of peaceful coexistence. She noted that the civilizational achievements of Bahrain in this field have created a positive culture in all levels which is reflected in the strength of community bonds among citizens. On Sunday, the Council of Representatives held its first ordinary meeting on the second session of the fifth legislative term, chaired by the Speaker of the Council, Fozi Yezina. The meeting began with a speech delivered by the Council Speaker in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for opening the current session. The Speaker affirmed the contents of His Majesty's speech, embodied His Majesty's vision to serve the country and its people, and will serve as a guide for the work of the Council in the coming period. The Representatives Council held today its weekly session today, chaired by the first Deputy Speaker, Abdel Nabi Salman, where the session began with ratifying the minutes of the first regular session. The Council was briefed on the letter of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister on Decree Bylaw 9 of 2019, approving the agreement on the petroleum exploration and participation and production between the government of Bahrain and any company. The Council was also briefed on the decrees and laws issued between the first and second sessions of the fifth legislative term. It also reviewed the letters and proposals of the Minister of Parliament Affairs. Also on Sunday, the Shura Council held its first ordinary meeting of the second session of the fifth legislative term following His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's opening of the session and delivering the royal speech. Chairman Ali Saleh affirmed the Council's support of the royal speech which discussed preserving the security and stability of the country and the Council's endeavor to work with all its capabilities alongside the Council of Representatives and the government to achieve the leadership's aspiration. He affirmed that the leadership patronage of the opening ceremony affirms its continued support for the legislative authority. He also noted that everyone looks forward at the beginning of every session to His Majesty the King's speech and its important content that discuss internal and external affairs and ambitious plans aimed at developing the country and its people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputized the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to inaugurate the 5th Middle East Process Engineering Conference and Exhibition and the first edition of the World Petroleum Council hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain at Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. More on this report with Habab al -Ghaffar. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated the 5th Middle East Process Engineering Conference and Exhibition, MAPEC 2019, and the first edition of the World Petroleum Council, hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain from the 14th to the 16th of October, organized by the Middle East Energy Events, in cooperation with the American Institute of Chemical Engineers, and in coordination coordination with the National Oil and Gas Authority and with the support of local, national and international companies. The National Oil and Gas Authority continues to draw plans and strategies to employ modern and advanced technology in the oil and gas sectors, seeking to strengthen relations with various international oil companies with the aim of exchanging knowledge and experience in this field. With MEPEC, the Middle East Process Engineering Conference and Exhibition, we uh, this year have uh, uh, the World Petroleum Council uh, with its first downstream event. Of course, both are under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and uh, this event happens uh, every two years. 
So uh, it's, uh, it's always good to come to MEPEC. We have the American Institute of Chemical Engineers as a major participant. Uh, you've got university students of chemical engineering. There is a, uh, an award for leadership uh, uh, of excellence uh, for women. And, uh, of course, we have the chemical uh, car race uh, that uh, universities compete for. Uh, then you've got the innovation zone. We have, of course, regional companies that are big sponsors from the region. Uh, and it's, uh, it's always good to see process and chemical engineers gather. This is their event. Under the theme of integration, strategy and leadership, MEPIC is one of the largest international conferences specialized in the field of petroleum, addressing a number of topics and refining strategy, petrochemical leadership, national vision changes, business models, customer requirements, environment, sustainability, security and other related topics. The biggest industry conference with more than 3,500 international delegates attending this conference. And what are they talking about? Digitalizations, uh, artificial intelligence, technology transfer, modernization, how to cope with transforming the traditional industry into a modern sustainable industry that has less effect on environment as well as uh, has the highest safety standard, where you have the top brains of the world, practical people, technology companies, licensing companies, practitioners, operators, all under one roof. And what is important for us in this uh, version of this conference is that the youth and the women in industry are given uh, visibility and are given priorities. The Minister of Oil said that the National Oil and Gas Authority has launched a number of vital projects such as the new replacement of the oil pipeline linking the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the third gas plant of Bahrain National Gas Company which is one of the largest industrial projects in the company's history. During the 8,000 square meter exhibition, the Minister of Oil was briefed about the products and services representing the latest technologies in the oil, gas and petrochemicals industry by more than 150 exhibitors from major, regional and international companies. The global event is attended by a group of speakers, dignitaries, CEOs, decision makers, technicians, engineers, academics, local, regional and international universities with the aim of exchanging knowledge, experiences, best practices and modern technologies in order to maintain its competitiveness in the global markets and attracting qualified human resources with experiences able to innovate and develop the future of operations engineering. The fifth edition of MEPIC is not just a place where you can experience groundbreaking technology and listen to industry leaders. It's an environment well designed for the exchange of ideas. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Government Forum to Combat Trafficking in Persons in the Middle East, organized by the National Committee to Combat Trafficking in Persons and the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, in cooperation with the International Organization for Immigration and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime in the GCC. The Minister delivered a speech in which he stressed the Kingdom's keenness to protect human dignity, in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, to respect the values of peaceful coexistence and mutual respect. He noted that the government, led by His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has efficiently implemented His Majesty's directives, enabling the Kingdom to be one of the leading countries in the field of trafficking in persons. He noted that the Kingdom maintained its Tier 1 status in the U.S. State Department's 2019 Trafficking in Person Report, being the first country in the MENA 
region to achieve such rank. He highlighted the programs and initiatives implemented by Bahrain in the field of trafficking in persons, including the National Referral Program, the Victims of Trafficking in Persons Shelter, and the Flexible Permit. In addition, the Kingdom will host the Regional Training Center on Combating Trafficking in Persons to be launched in partnership with the UNDOC and the GCC. The Minister expressed thanks to the CEO of the LMRA and Chairman of the NCCTIPs, Osama al Absi, for his continued efforts in this field. He also wished the forum success in finding solutions to combat trafficking in persons and put forward initiatives that contribute to supporting victims and integrating them in the society. The development in the arena of combating trafficking in persons in the Kingdom of Bahrain over the last few years and the international recognition that we have achieved puts us in a position of responsibility to our fellow humans to lead the way, coordinate the efforts and exchange the best practices in our region so that we would end up with a trafficking-free Middle East. It's incredibly helpful when governments come together to exchange best practices and new ideas about how to stop the crime of trafficking in persons. We know that it is a crime that is on the rise. There's 24.9 million victims around the world, and they're being denied their most basic freedoms. They don't get to decide where they work, when they wake up in the morning, or who touches their bodies. Fortunately, each country's laws here, each country represented here tonight, their laws demand that trafficking stop, and we're going to find a way to do it together. This is the first uh, intergovernmental forum in the region that looks at uh, trafficking in persons. Uh, it is. It is a platform to share experiences, share challenges, share best practices between a group of like-minded governments. Uh, we're pleased to be with our colleagues from uh, UNODC uh, uh, taking part as a technical support function for this very important forum. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime being the custodian of the Convention Against uh, Human Trafficking, we are actually proud to be here in partnership with the Kingdom of Bahrain and particularly the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the National Committee on Combating Human Trafficking. We are grateful for Bahrain for having provided such platform for the exchange of policies, strategies and uh, experience among the countries of the Arab region and uh, uh, the GCC countries in uh, particular to be able to advance together in facing the mutual challenge of uh, the human traffic. In Bahrain we're very proud that we have tier one in the uh, area of uh, combating human trafficking. This is a status that we have achieved over the last years and we have to continue to work together as national mechanisms uh, to maintain this uh, status. As a national institution of human rights, we believe that raising awareness about uh, human trafficking is important, protecting is very important, and uh, leading those that are uh, victims as well to the right place uh, to receive their rights, and as well the role of the public prosecutor's office in combating this uh, issue. An implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince on the importance of providing high-quality government service for citizens, continuing development to reach excellence, and His Royal Highness's announcement during the Government Forum 2019 to the launch of the National Genome Center, the Minister of Health, Faiq al-Saleh, inaugurated the National Genome Center today at Salmaniya Medical Complex. The Minister noted that the center will contribute to preventing genetic diseases and the development of effective drugs to treat them, which helps provide a healthy life and prevent diseases from present and future generations. She stressed the commitment of the Ministry of Health to implement the directives affirmed by His Royal Highness for various sectors with the aim of increasing the pace of progress which reflects the development achievements for Bahrain and its people. As Saleh pointed out that the Ministry of Health has taken the necessary steps and procedures to establish the center which began with the establishment of a biobank to store vital samples at Salmania, turning it into a leading center in the region and providing an interactive a platform to provide the necessary samples for studies and research. Doll making has long been a traditional craft in Japan and a new exhibition has been opened by the Embassy of Japan in cooperation with Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities at the Bahrain National Museum between October 13th and November 13th to celebrate the Japanese tradition. More on this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. 
Famously known as the Kingdom of Dolls, Japan's time-honored cultural craft comes to Bahrain in an exhibition of the finest dolls of traditional performing arts. Here, organized by the Japanese Embassy and Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities. In Japan, dolls have been part of everyday life since ancient times. Japanese dolls reflect the customs of Japan and the aspirations of its people, possess distinctive regional attributes, and over the centuries have developed in many diverse forms. Dolls also provide a showcase for traditional Japanese craft products, such as textiles. Each figurine has its own distinct meaning and purpose, which is deeply connected to daily life. We can say that uh, dolls in Japan are part of our life and uh, our culture. And I hope uh, through this uh, uh, exhibition, uh, uh, people in Bahrain uh, will appreciate that aspect of Japanese culture. And I hope uh, again uh, that Bahraini uh, people will enjoy uh, this uh, exhibition, which will continue for one month. The exhibition uh, uh, is uh, uh, very much uh, uh, important for me and uh, I hope uh, uh, through uh, this kind of exhibition uh, Bahraini people uh, will understand not only uh, Japanese products you know, but also Japanese culture and how Japanese people live their, 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 their everyday lives as well. It's a great cultural exchange activity. Bahraini audience are showing great interest in exploring and understanding Japanese arts and culture. This is a wonderful opportunity for us at the National Museum in Bahrain to highlight the heritage and culture of Japan. Uh, this exhibition came to be a possibility for all of us to see and to enjoy the beautiful collection of Japanese dolls in collaboration with the Japanese Embassy in the Kingdom of Bahrain. I think these exhibitions really highlight um, a fantastic cultural dialogue between us in Bahrain and other nations. His Excellency the Ambassador is very passionate about his heritage, about these wonderful dolls. He has given us a fantastic tour explaining the legacy, the heritage of each of the types of dolls we see. Until November 13th, traditional Japanese dolls across a number of styles, as well as regional and creative pieces, are on display throughout the week, except Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m.